The reason there's a lot of overlap between autonomic neuropathy and small fiber neuropathy are twofold. Number one, they're approximately the same size. They're small diameter, which means that when they get inflamed or they get injured or they get irritated, they're more likely to affect a larger piece of the tissue, more of the nerve bundle. And the number two is both of these fiber types, even though small fiber neuropathies tend to be sensory, they both don't have any have myelin coverings over top of the cord. And the way you think about myelin, it's kind of like you'd have a cord for an electrical outlet, like for a lamp, right? That cord insulates the wire. We don't have those in small fibers or in autonomic nerves, and those nerves are just bare endings. So they're more vulnerable to things like compressions, inflammation, different viral activities. So they're more likely to get injured. So people that have small fiber neuropathy where they're losing sensation in different parts of their skin to hot, cold, pain, those types of things are more likely to also have autonomic fibers be affected in the motor system in the thorax, but also the loss of sensory activity from feet, hands, legs, wherever, can also affect the maps of those areas so the brain is able to control blood flow to them as well. So we say something simple like neuropathic POTS, but the reality here is that there's a lot more nuance to it, which is actually really great because the more you can dig in and figure out, well, is, which part is it affecting? Is it autonomic nerves? Is it sensory nerves? Helps you to be able to devise a treatment strategy that can be tailored just to you.